please. Okay. I'm Lydia. I'm sure I, I know everybody here in the meeting. <laughs> I'm Mackenzie. Hi, Carmen. <laughs> I'm Lydia. I'm a senior at UMD studying environmental science and sustainability. Um, and over the course of the next few months, I'll be teaching a few other classes. We have one about hemming pants and then um, thrifting tips and tricks. Um, today, we'll be learning how to uh, reattach buttons and patch holes. And everyone who participates in the class today are, is entered to win a mending kit made by me. Um, it includes like the basic tools like needle, uh, thread, um, and some fabric as well. All right, here's the order we'll go in. Um, we'll go over worn holes and jeans, uh, tears in clothing, leggings, socks, and then um, how to reattach a button. And then just a little background about why it's important to mend your clothing. It's good for the planet and your pocket. Um, from a report from the urban consumption in a 1.5 Celsius um, world, it was stated that if you buy only eight pieces of new clothing a year, you could reduce uh, the waste from the textile industry by 50% um, by 2050. And if we, we were to buy only three, per, three pieces of clothing a year, um, you could reduce your waste, the waste um, by 75%, which is crazy to think about. Um, and rather than replacing your clothes, repairing your clothes brings life back into it, um, brings life back into the items you already own uh, and it saves money in the long run. Um, while doing a little research for this class, I came across um, the book, Visible Mending. Um, I highly recommend, she had lots of cool tips and tricks. Um, and I pulled this quote from uh, the book. It says, uh, whether repairing something old or using fabric to create something new, mending returns a value to something. It's an opportunity to decorate, express identity and celebrate connections. Um, it's an extension of making, but also an opportunity to express, which I thought was pretty, pretty cool, a fun way to look at it. Um, here is her Instagram page if you want to check it out. I know she's written a few other books and has lots of um, tutorials about uh, different um, sewing kind of things. She does a lot of punch needle um, embroidery. And then uh, an upcycled closet is another one to check out. She has very similar stuff. Um, fixing holes, mending clothes, that kind of thing. All right, so we will start with jeans. And if anyone has any questions, just feel free to pop in um, and ask. Um, and the jeans, um, patching jeans is very similar to patching the leggings so they can kind of be intertwined in that way. All right, jean patches, um, you can buy iron-on patches. Um, such as the first two pictures. Um, but we will be going over that third picture that we'll be focusing on that style. All right, so to patch your jeans, um, the Suzako style, uh, it's a Japanese style of um, clothes. It translates into tiny stabs, I think, which is kind of what you do when you <laughs> thread the um, needle through your, through your clothes. So what you'll need is embroidery, embroidery floss, a seam ripper, um, scissors or snips, um, washable, a washable glue stick. And if you don't have a glue stick, you could use pins. Um, you'll want to use a long needle and then fabric to patch with. Uh, you want fabric with a similar weight to your jeans. You can use denim or um, I've used um, flannel before, something a little heavier. You want to avoid lightweight cotton. And you want to make sure the fabric is about an inch bigger than the hole on all of the sides. All right, I will start the video and kind of walk you guys through it. All right. So you want to start by um, flipping your jeans inside out. This is just a jean leg that I cut off from um, a pair of shorts. So if it looks weird, that's why. <laughs> um, and you wanna start, you can kind of see up at that top. Um, I ripped the side open with a seam ripper just so I can stick my hand through it. You don't have to do that, but it's pretty helpful um, when you're stitching. And then with the glue, you just wanna trace around your hole. Um, 
And since it's washable, it'll wash out once you wash your jeans. Um, and it doesn't harden. So when you're trying to um, weave through that fabric, it's not hard, if that makes sense. So you wanna stick um, your patch on your jean and then flip it back the other way. And you can see that's where I um, made that hole. And if your hole is like at the bottom of your leg or towards the top or on the waist, you don't have to make that hole, but if it's along the leg, it just makes it easier, um, it makes it go quicker. And then here you just want to um, thread your needle with the embroidery thread. If you cut your thread at an angle, it makes it a little easier to stick it through that hole. and just pull that all the way through. I think I did about an arm's length of thread, but you can always add more. And then tie the knot at the end. Then you'll be inserting your needle from the bottom up. And there's that hole. and then bring that needle through. And then here, you're kind of be weaving up and down. I like to keep my um, fabric on my needle. If you have a longer needle, um, you'll be able to hold more fabric. Um, here, you can also use a water, or not water, um, a fabric pen and a ruler to trace out uh, straight lines if you would like, otherwise you can just kind of freehand it. That's what I did. And then you will want to pull that through and there you'll see that stitch um, start to, to form. And then you just continue on that row um, until you reach the very end. And you can really use any color thread, if, any color thread you want. Um, if you want it less noticeable, you could use a blue thread, more noticeable. You can use brighter colors. You can use more than one color just ever whatever you'd like and there again it's just kind of weaving up and down are you trying to off center the stitches at all Lydia um I think I did a little bit but you don't necessarily have to do that okay and you can also come back down once you finish that entire patch you can come down the other direction and make little like crosses if you would like to secure it a little more And you don't want to pull it too tight or else you'll get like a big lumpy ridge which you don't want. You want to keep it fairly loose. And just keep repeating that. Make sure you're catching that um, patch underneath there, sewing that to the jean. Um, that glue should stick it pretty well. So you, you shouldn't have to worry too much about that. And here I just repeat it, I can go forward. If anyone has any questions or wants me to slow down, just let me know. Here I'm kind of coming towards the end. I believe this is the last row that I did. You can also do it with the patch on the outside if you would like. Um, and then you'll just have to make sure all those edges of that fabric are um, included in that little weave. And then here, I believe that's the end where I just um, insert the needle underneath. Um, and then turn the jean inside out and tie a knot to secure that thread. And then um, whatever excess fabric you have, you can cut that off and trim it.
Oops, I pulled it out of the bag. And then with that um, open seam, you can either, um, I don't know where the slide that went with it. Here we go. Um, you can either use a machine or you can hand sew it with a whip stitch, um, which is just kind of looping around the edges to um, re-secure it, just like that image in the corner. Um, and I have a video coming later of me doing that. Over that again. And then repairing a tear um, in your jeans. This can also be used along a seam. Um, this upper picture, I caught it on a nail. And so it tore a straight line, so there wasn't a huge hole in it. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, I lost my place. Um, all you need for this is a embroidery thread and a needle. Um, and like I said, if it occurs in a clean line, this is what I would suggest using. And here's a little video. Um, it's almost like a fishtail braid, kind of um, creating a triangle point, I guess. I'll enlarge that. But you start by inserting it underneath and then pulling it through. And then you just keep repeating that, um, pulling that thread tight to get those um, edges close together. I, uh, I think I trimmed up the little strings and stuff just to keep that stitch clean, but you just keep repeating that all the way down. And the tighter or the closer you get to the previous stitch, the tighter um, the stitch will be. Do you have to pull this one super tight so that the the tear itself is really tight together or even overlapping or do you not want it to overlap at all? I would not pull it super tight, um, tight enough where those edges come back together, I would say. I can play that again because it's a short one. You can see it's kind of apart there. And then once you pull that thread, it'll come, come together. If you do pull it super tight, it's no big deal. It'll just um, create like a little bump, I would say. And this doesn't have to be used on just jeans. It could really be used on any, any sort of tear on clothing. And along with the previous patch, you can use it on sweaters, you can use it on, um, jackets, that kind of thing. Oops. All right, so we will get into leggings. And like I said, um, you can use that previous stitch with the patch. Um, you just wanna make sure to use a lighter weight fabric with the leggings. Um, you don't wanna use like denim to patch your leggings. That would be not a good idea. It'd be too lumpy. <laughs> it would tear out the leggings eventually. So we'll start with a straight tear in the leggings and then we'll start with a simple darning method combined with a blanket stitch. So these pictures um, are a few different ways. I mended my leggings. The first one is um, the darning method. You can see it in that middle picture, that little, it almost looks like a sun or like a spider, I think. And then um, that last picture is, it was like a straight tear that I just used a whip stitch to um, sew together. And it's a little less visible down at that bottom in that middle picture. Um, yeah, we'll get into that. So all you need is um, sewing thread. You don't wanna use embroidery thread. You wanna use a thinner thread to um, repair your leggings and you also want a small needle. Um, you start by turning your leggings inside out, and then you want to thread your needle, um, tie a knot at the end, and then uh, pinch the sides together um, where that hole is. Then you insert your needle into the legging, pulling it until you reach that end of the thread. Then you'll just whip stitch um, along the hole. Then once you're done, you just um, tie a knot and snip the thread. So 
So here's the little video. Here I used embroidery thread just because that's what I had on hand. I would not suggest using that. It's very bulky. Um, yeah, you can kind of see at that bottom, I have a bigger hole and then it's starting to wear away. So you just insert your thread and pull it through the other side. And these leggings are old. There's so many pill, pilly things on it and, and tears. Well loved. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You'll just see it's inserting underneath there and pulling it through. You want to pull this kind of tight because you are sewing those, those sides together. And you can either pinch it close if you have a bigger one. I like to hold it on my finger just so it's like a flat surface. You can also stick something in there like a piece of cardboard to keep it flat. You just keep repeating that all the way down your seam. I did super wobbly there, sorry. And then here I'm reaching the end where that hole is. And I, I just use the same um, method of just pulling that hole tight. The, um, this method of repairing your leggings will be a little bit bulky. Um, I would say it's very simple and quick, but um, like again, you'll see that little lump um, where you do stitch it back up. Do you think it would have been, would it still be pretty bulky even if you'd used a thinner thread? Yeah, I think it would still make a little bump, but it wouldn't be as noticeable. Um, this one is definitely very big because I use that big thread. <laughs> but here I'm just finishing it up and then you just tie it off. And this is on the inside of the legging so you can make that little knot and um, clip the excess. All right. Now we're, we'll get into darning the leggings. You can also use this for um, socks, sweaters. You can use it on jeans too. You can really use it on anything, uh, sweatpants, sweatshirts, all of that. Um, with darning, you're pretty much just weaving thread together. Um, in this picture, I think it's a sweater and she's using um, yarn to repatch that hole. Um, you wanna start on one end and make um, stitches in the same direction. And then you start the other way and kind of weave in and out. Um, so to fix your hole in your legging with the darning method, um, you'll use the same material, uh, sewing thread and needle. You want to thread your needle and tie it at a knot at the end. And then you'll be making a blanket stitch around um, the hole and I can play that video because it makes more sense to play it than for me to just talk. Um, so here's me starting with the um, blanket stitch. And the blanket stitch just helps to make that um, edge around the hole, uh, just creates less stress on it and um, helps when you're darning to have a little anchor to anchor it on. So what you wanna do is um, bring the needle from the back um, up. You wanna do it about a fourth of an inch um, from the edge or however um, big you want that stitch. Um, Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to pause it. And then um, 
you want to poke your needle up from the back again so that needle comes up from the top, the same point where you started uh, to create a loop around that edge. Um, and then you'll want to send your needle under the loop, stitching, um, kind of interweaving. Um, you can see here, I'll insert it under and then there'll be that loop. You want to insert from the back and pull that through again. And super tight or else it'll pull the fabric. Yeah, and it and doesn't here, look like you're pulling the, the hole together at this point. At right, all. this is just creating that, that edge. So there, there won't be any pulling of that hole closed. Okay. And it helps if you have, um, here I use like a cookie tin. You can use like a mason jar, anything round um, that you can hold in your hand uh, is very helpful. And then you can rubber band uh, that top to it just to secure it. So you want to keep making that blanket stitch. Um, you don't want to pull too tight or else you'll lose, lose that loop around it. And you can see I kind of stretched it out. It's easier to um, work with and kind of see exactly what you're doing. Is the blanket stitch specific to darning? No, it's not. You usually use it um, as if you were like making, say, napkins, you would use that as the edge, almost like a binding um, or similar to like a hem of the edge of the fabric. Okay. So it's not specific at all to darning. I'm learning lots of stuff, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> Good. All right. So then we will get into darning once you finish that blanket stitch around the edge. And usually with darning, you're usually using um, a thick yarn or a thicker thread. Um, since the leggings are so thin and stretchy, um, I would suggest using the sewing machine um, thread. So here you're just inserting the um, thread from underneath, just wherever. And then you'll be working in straight lines across that hole, filling it up, inserting from the bottom up and then going through, you kind of see. And you wanna use that edge of the blanket stitch um, just to kind of anchor that other, that thread. I also went through the edge of the legging as well too. And here again, you don't want to pull it tight. You want to leave that open so you can weave through it later. It was tedious working with leggings. I've never darned leggings before. I've always done it with <laughs> thicker threads. So it's a fun, fun learning process. And so you can this, see. this technique is kind of your own creation, isn't it, Lydia? Yeah, because I didn't have anything for leggings. Right. It was hard. A lot of them said just to do the whip stitch and then you'll be left with this kind of bulky thing. Others said to try to patch it with just fabric, um, which you can also do. But I feel like um, darning kind of just replaces that empty hole. It's almost like creating new fabric where... Um, it's worn down. So it it lays flat, it's not super bulky. And you can use black, like you don't have to use a, a different color, but I thought it was kind of cute using the blue. Now my, <laughs> my leggings are all spotted, which is kind of fun. And you can stretch it out a little bit um, while you're working on it, which helps. And it's okay if they're not perfect lines, it'll be a little messy, um, which is okay. Don't, don't get too tied up on it. 
All right, so that's the first step of the darning, and then we will move on to the second part. Here you can kind of see those lines going across there. And then what you wanna do is go over and under each of those threads as best as you can. In this video, I did not get every single one under and over. Um, like I said, it's pretty small and tiny. Um, just do the best that you can. And then here, you kind of want to pull it a little tighter, tighter than you were doing um, that first row of stitches. You can see I'm still working under that blanket stitch and the edge of the legging. Just kind of go under and over those threads. You want to start at the edge of the the hole as best as you can and then work your way over. I can play it again because that was kind of quick. And just keep using that blanket stitch as an anchor. It helps and it'll make it more secure in the end. And then here again is that picture of darning. Um, just that weaving in and out. And then this is, um, I think this is a sock. A sock and yarn. Um, just so you can see a bigger version of it. I know you guys all have yarn left over from all the crocheting projects you've been doing. <laughs> and you're just doing that little weave up and over, um, very similar to that patching method we did. Um, this sock doesn't necessarily have a hole in it, but it's pretty worn. So I'm just kind of re-securing that. And then I have a video of it going the other direction. And then you just wanna, oops, go under and over each of those threads as best as you can. I mean, the um, lines aren't always gonna be perfectly straight. Um, so just do it as best as you possibly can. And then you'll come back through and then you'll go the opposite direction. So that previous one you went underneath, you wanna go over the top of that one and vice versa. And you go through the entire row and keep that on your needle. It's easier to, like I did here, stop in the middle of the row and um, continue to weave over those, those threads. And there's darning just on, um, a bigger, bigger scale than the tiny little leggings. Um, and like I said, you can use that for socks, you can use it for sweaters, you can use it for all kinds of things. Okay, now we will get into buttons. Um, two whole buttons and then four, they're both pretty similar, um, similar method. So what you wanna do, um, you just need a button, a uh, thread and a needle. You wanna make sure your needle head is small enough to go through the hole of your button. And you wanna make sure your thread isn't super thick where it'll get caught in the hole. Um, just to check it, you wanna insert your needle into that hole real quick to make sure um, it'll fit through there. Uh, and you just want to, um, oh, I think this is in the wrong order, but that's okay. 
Um, I'll start with the video. So I've had several occasions where I've busted my buttons trying to push yeah. the two big needles. <laughs> <laughs> I know it gets it all situated and you're like, okay, and then you have to get up and find a new needle and get yeah. the right thread. All right, so you want to um, make a knot at the end of your thread and then insert your thread from the bottom up into whatever hole, it doesn't really matter where you start. And then it'll kind of flop around. You just kind of want to secure it in your hands the best as you can. And then you want to insert your, your needle into the opposite hole. And then you repeat that um, again in the same hole for about four or five times. And if you're using a um, two hole needle, you do this or a two hole button, you do the same thing. Um, just keep on repeating that process. And you don't want to pull it super tight. You want a little room. So if you're using it as like a coat button, you want that extra space for your, the fabric um, to hold on to underneath that button. And then, um, I believe that's my last round on that side. And then you um, start on the other side, just creating a little X. So I told you my button reattaching is pretty, pretty messy. So <laughs> why, I, I think I end up doing every single hole, like sure. in a, some sort of, is there a reason why you do the X's? Um, just to secure it a little more and make it tidy um, and make sure you get each hole evenly so it's like even weight distributed on that that button. And then here um, this is the last the last round if you have um, a two hole button you'll just do the two holes you'll keep repeating that and then skip to this step. Um, so on that last round, you want to insert the needle into the button, but not through the fabric, as you can see on, on this video. So you'll have that thread, and then you wrap the thread around the button about four times. And then once you have that wrapped around, you insert the needle back under the thread, and then you'll pull it through. And then you'll just want to create a little knot. I like to um, make that loop and then um, insert that needle through that loop to make that knot. Okay, so now I feel like you've just unveiled secret magic. So I've never done the circle around the back of the button. Is yeah, why my buttons keep falling off again. <laughs> Yeah, it's just extra security. Hold that button in place and almost like creating a knot around the thread secures that thread as well so it doesn't fray. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> and there again is just the written out version um, with pictures. I think that's the end of the sides. If you guys have any questions or want me to go back to anything, so let me know. I am happy to do it. Oh, I think there was a question in the chat. Um, I'm attaching a button. Oh, good. <laughs> Mom's helping me though. <laughs> because, because my fingers are not very nimble. <laughs> Um, but I'm following see, your really... instructions. It seems to be working. Good. <laughs> uh, the question was, so when you're darning, don't pull the edges together. Yeah, you want to keep that um, hole open. Um, like I said, you're pretty much creating um, new fabric within that hole. So just um, don't pull that, pull that hole open or else you won't be able, be able to weave through it. And I can go back to the button images too if you need that. <laughs> OK, 
you have any questions or any any need any help, just let me know. <laughs> I feel like I have lots of questions. <laughs> I found out the most challenging part of putting the button on yeah. is when you when you're coming through the back again and trying to figure out where the hole is on the button. Oh yeah, yeah. You kind of just have to play with it. That's a monster. Well, I'm getting okay. That. Here's a question, Lydia. Okay. So I have my leggings and they ripped on a seam, luckily. Mm -hmm. um, how far, in order to keep it from ripping again, once I fix it, like how far along the, like the outside of where it's not ripped, should I sew to keep it from ripping again? Sure. Um, I would probably do about a fourth of an inch. Um, if you kind of look at the previous seam, there'll be kind of like an edge you could follow. Mm -hmm. I would suggest doing that. And you kind of want to start before that seam start or before that hole starts, you want to start a little bit further up to catch, catch all of it. So it doesn't pray. Perfect. And then what did you suggest for using for, if you don't have like a fancy darning egg, you mm -hmm. said a couple of things that you can kind of repurpose from your kitchen. Yeah, I actually have, I like to use this little cookie, cookie tin. It fits my hand nicely, so it's easy to hold. You can use a mason jar, um, anything really that's browned and easy to hold in your hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's like darning mushrooms you can buy, but you can pretty much use whatever you have. <laughs> yeah, those are a little bit expensive. I thought yeah. about, you know, maybe once COVID is over, like hunting through antique stores to see if I can find one. But mm -hmm. yes, all about the repurposing. Yes. <laughs> now, this might be a spoiler for our thrifting tips and tricks, but are you going to talk about how to navigate, you know, when you're thrifting and you come upon things or maybe just have people refer back to this is how you fix a button or fix a hole. So when you're out thrifting, it's not a no go for a awesome purchase that you might be able to make. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. I know the last <laughs> time I mentioned a little bit about like buying yarn at the thrift store. So I'll definitely, yeah. I love buying fabric at the thrift store. You can always find fun things. Um, or even like buying sheets to repurpose into something and using that as fabric. So I will definitely be talking more about that and how you can find craft supplies at the fabric store. <laughs> nice. Or not fabric store, the thrift store. <laughs> <laughs> Which is your fabric store. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's my fabric store. <laughs> Does anybody else have any questions for Lydia um, with your own crafting projects? I feel like I hog all of her time because I have <laughs> lots of things to fix. Everyone looks busy. I wish I had something that I was working on. <laughs> This one was fun because I definitely needed to repair my leggings and that hole in my jean jacket. So it's a good excuse to fix some of my stuff. <laughs> totally. I successfully attached a button. Oh, good. <laughs> Yay! 